Small companies in the renewable sector have traditionally faced several challenges in securing finance. This includes limited track records, small balance sheets and high due diligence costs. Rand Merchant Bank partnered with KFW Development Bank to address these hurdles and establish the first fund to finance small renewable energy projects in South Africa. With me is Hugh Harden. He is an infrastructure finance transactor at Rand Merchant Bank. Hugh, thank you for joining me. Tell us about this fund. It came into being to um, fund a small renewables program, a small IPP it was called. Um, it was similar to the large scale renewables program, but it wasn't attracting as much bank attention because the projects are all around the 100 million rand range. And if, if a bank's offered a billion rand project or 100 million rand, the, the attention obviously would go towards the billion rand project. So the IPP office foresaw challenges in obtaining finance for the small program. There were initially about going to be about um, 10 to 25 megawatt projects. Um, it did go through a round of procurement. Projects were selected. And at that time, that was when we started setting up the fund with KFW. Um, KFW is the German uh, Development Finance Institution who put in about 300 million odd of softer funding, which they don't necessarily want back. They wanted to catalyze commercial bank, uh, attracting commercial banks to the transaction. So RMB committed a billion on top of that, um, of our funding. And the, the premise behind it was that it, a fund manager would then run that fund and they would do all the due diligence and the documentation, et cetera, around these small projects so that um, it was cheaper to run, it was leaner, there'd be fairly standard documents. It wouldn't require a full project finance solution such as a, a larger project would require. And therefore, not as many uh, legal fees, development fees, technical advisor fees, et cetera. So, cheaper and better for, for the project developers. Unfortunately, sort of quite close to when the fund achieved financial close, the small IPP program was shelved and, and didn't come back to life and it still is, is um, moribund. I think I might, it's not in the IRP anymore, so um, I don't think we're going to see that program. But the fund has been ready and the private sector is getting on with its own business of generating power. So um, first fund now, is, has a much broader ambit. We are seeing a lot of um, projects that <coughs> were ori originally not the intention. There's, there's small hydro, there's, there's a lot of rooftop solar that is a hugely burgeoning industry. Um, and all of, all of these small projects still uh, have battled with a funding solution. And so FIRST has now been in the right place at the right time to take advantage of that, that private sector solution, um, you know, solution creation. So it is a, in a bit of a sweet spot um, in this whole industry. Uh, you, you said earlier um, it, it is, has been shelved, uh, some of the projects have been shelved due to regulatory uncertainty. We've seen a lot happening in uh, recent weeks uh, mm. and months. Um, will that affect the, uh, uh, these projects and the timeframes uh, for them to come online? The original projects had an, uh, were all under a single ESKIM offtake um, and they would have had re uh, generation licenses, etc. The regulatory uncertainty that these small projects now face is, is if they're over 10 megawatts, they need a generation license. Other than that, there is no real uh, regulatory impediment. A rooftop solar doesn't, it requires registration with NERSA, but it doesn't require a generation license if it's under 10 megawatts. And um, uh, so not relying on on the IPP office and, and ESKIM, um, these projects are still going ahead and a lot of shopping malls are putting rooftop solar on. Um, we're seeing it at, you know, with, and, and these are credible players. They're the, the, the growth points and the Eris's and the Ablands of, of the world are all doing rooftop solar on all of their shopping malls and all of their developments. So um, there, the, there is a lot of growth, I think, that's still to come. Um, in the IRP there is 20 megawatts per year of embedded generation allowed for um, and that doesn't just mean rooftop, it means a big industrial putting a small plant next to their, next to their facility. Um, there, <coughs> there is the potential to do it with, with uh, LPG if you bring it in or, or um, you know, any, other, any other form of generation. If you've got enough land, you do your own PV plant next to your facility. This is a very interesting industry because pricing is actually declining quite quickly and, and, and soon it will be lower than the, the ESKIM costs. Uh, and I foresee that there will be many of these smaller projects. Uh, most businesses will consider it. Uh, what, what is the pipeline of projects in this uh, market? I mean, already solar is a hell of a lot cheaper than, than, um, than I think new build ESKIM. I think it is already cheaper than perhaps Megaflex, which is, includes old build ESKIM. 
And I think when the real game changer will happen, which, will, which I imagine will happen in the next couple of years, is when uh, battery storage plus solar becomes cheaper, because then you've got base load power. And uh, at that point, there's, uh, th there's not a CFO of a large corporate who won't want uh, a known price path on his electricity tariff, and he can now achieve that. We saw the, re the release of the IRP uh, a few weeks ago, uh, and we've been waiting for that plan for a long time, and I think many projects were delayed because it hasn't been published. Uh, how, how would that plan, and especially the, the short-term need for Eskom to buy in power or electricity from IPPs, affect this industry? Perhaps the one missing element of the IRP, as I said, there, was, there is embedded generation in it, but the missing element for me is business-to-business -business power so that you can have um, a, a, one corporate selling to another corporate, a generation corporate selling to a, a, an off-taker off um, through wheeling. The regulation does allow for wheeling still. There is um, wheeling agreements, but it's, it's not easy. Um, I think at this stage, Eskom is not... Um, as the discussions go on about splitting Eskom into generation and transmission, there's a, there's a slight uh, pushback against wheeling because it, it would mean losing customers for the generation side of things. But if Eskom's competing on a generation basis against the private sector and is running the transmission network, I think the, the, the business to business market will also blossom. How many projects are you involved in? At the moment, FIRST is looking mostly at rooftop solar and, ha and a, a large rooftop solar plant has closed and money has been paid away. But about to reach close, um, is we've got a small hydro, we've got a biogas di digester, um, an energy efficiency sort of energy drive system, uh, and a lot more rooftop solar coming through. So it has taken a year or so to originate the projects to get the documentation in place, etc. But we're expecting it to accelerate now. So I think in the next six months we'll see a lot of money go out the door and within a year we could have used up the first tranche entirely. Rooftop is very interesting because uh, some roofs are bigger than others. Uh, how would a typical rooftop project uh, look like? I think that's also faced, it's faced challenges. They, I don't think anyone got the structure right for a long time as to who owns it, how do you structure the offtake agreement. I think a CFO of a shopping mall doesn't want to be reading a standard power purchase agreement with time of use tariffs, etc. That's just too much detail. So how we're seeing it work now is that uh, a developer will build it, first buys it and leases, leases it to the, the corporate. So no one who's actually uh, involved in the property business needs to now understand the electricity business and the complex calculations involved in time of use tariffs and energy charges and uh, capacity charges, etc. Yeah, I could imagine there are many projects looking for finance um, and as you said earlier, it doesn't seem as if some of the major finance providers are, are looking at this sector. Do you uh, foresee the fund growing? Absolutely, and uh, we did see, set it up so that it one day can be its own its own entity. It is a, it's a PTY limited, the fund, so uh, there's nothing to stop us putting more debt in as it reaches its, its limits on its first, you know, first tranche. It's, it's not a closed fund, it's not private equity driven looking for an exit. It's, it is a debt fund that is, hopefully grows into its own animal, at, primarily to finance small renewable projects. You, how would this fund contribute to the industry? In South Africa, it's, uh, it's very much required in terms of getting smaller generation out there. I think ultimately where I see it going is that it has a, a socio-economic benefit as well. I think it, it gets power to the end users. It's a, it's a way of establishing generation closer to where it's needed. Um, I think with large-scale generation with Madupis and Kusilias, they need to be in certain places where the coal is, etc. And then there's a lot of transmission and that last mile connectivity to villages and people isn't, isn't happening. Um, what I see, I see first growing into its own entity and ultimately being a source of capital for more distributed generation. Um, but I also think that in, in due course we could look at an African solution because I think the same challenges are faced elsewhere in, in, in Africa. I think that there hasn't been industrial growth on a scale in Africa f uh, to require new generation. A lot of governments are saying that they've got enough capacity or they've got overcapacity, and yet there's still millions of people without lights. And I think that um, what, this, what this can do is, is 
work towards funding mini grids, etc. It's a it's a it's a great case of collaboration between DFI capital, of which there is an abundance for renewables in Africa, and for um, empowering people, and and attracting commercial money into it. It will also reduce the dependence of private firms of national uh, grids. It will, and unfortunately, that comes with um, nervousness from from governments often. Um, but that is ultimately the way to go. It's quite um, it's quite a hackneyed analogy. Everybody has used it with the cell phone uh, industry, but that is what will happen. Is that ultimately, you know, the, the thought of building lines, long lines with wooden poles stuck in the ground to remote places is no more makes no more sense for electricity than it does for telephones. You, thank you for joining me and sharing your insights. It's been a pleasure. That was Hugh Harden. He is an infrastructure finance transactor at Rand Merchant Bank.